While MO2 can import a variety of different 3D models, there are times that we may want to use a 2D image, like a logo, to turn into a 3D object. As we've seen before, we'll need an SVG path to extrude out properly. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at using GIMP to create our SVGs to create logos and other graphics for MO2. Once I've loaded up GIMP, I want to open up my file. I'll navigate to File, and click Open to open my file. I can see my logo as a PNG. I'll click Open to bring it into my canvas. Once I have my logo inside my canvas in GIMP, we can use this logo to create paths for an SVG to export and bring into MO2. Different logos will have different needs. In this case, I have a nice clean mat that will make it pretty easy to create an SVG from. The quickest way to create a path is to use our fuzzy select tool. With our fuzzy select tool, let's select part of our logo. The fuzzy select tool works much like the magic wand tool in Photoshop. It'll create a selection based on similar color values. To select more than one item at once, I'll hold the shift key. Now I have these three items selected. To deselect an item, I'll hold the Command key. Currently, I only have these two items selected. To create a path from a selected item, let's navigate to Select and choose to Path. While you may not see it, a path has been created based on our selection. To see and work with our paths, let's enable the Path Dock from our menu. I'll click on Windows, Dockable Dialog, and Paths. In the top right corner, my path has been docked. I want to move this menu item down, so I'll click and drag it into my other panel. Now with my Paths tab open, I can clearly see the selection that's been created. Let's remove this for right now. I'll right click it and delete this path. This time let's select the logo in its entirety. I can see clearly which items have been selected and non-selected. I'll navigate to Select and click to Path. In addition to creating paths, there are times that you may want to clean up your paths or work with them. In GIMP 2.1 and above, I can work with these paths. I'll double-click my selection in the Paths tab. When creating SVG paths, Make sure that you have nice, crisp, clean edges. Review any unnecessary points. Or if you need to clean up an item or adjust it, click the points and drag. This will alter your selection. Let's just undo that. As you can see, it's very easy to work with simple logos inside GIMP. However, there are times that we may have more challenging logos. Just like before, I'll navigate to File and Open. I'll choose my MO2 logo and click Open to bring it into the canvas. Just like previously, I'll choose the Fuzzy Select tool and make my selection. Because of the gradients of colors, it can be difficult to choose a selection. Additionally, we have this extra shadow on the outside that is selecting some extra area that we may not want. There are times that adjusting the threshold value of our Fuzzy Select tool can help with the situation. I'll navigate to the Fuzzy Select tool parameters. Let's adjust the threshold to 85. Now, I'll try selecting again. It has now selected everything I need properly. There are times, though, the threshold may not be effective enough, and we may need to simplify and reduce the colors in our logo. To simplify or reduce the colors of our logo, let's select Image, Mode, Indexed. Once clicked, our Convert Image to Index Color dialog will appear. Depending on your logo, you may have to experiment with some of these different controls and values. For my situation, I want to generate an optimum palette. I'm going to reduce the number of colors in my composition to 2, and I'll click Convert. Our logo has now been reduced to two colors. First this bluish color, 
and then this white background. Using my fuzzy select tool one more time, I can see that it is clearly selecting the area that I wish. To make a path of this item, I'll navigate again to select, to path. Let's wrap this up and go back to our original logo. I'll just close this item and discard my changes. Let's export this final SVG path. If you remember correctly, we selected our logo and created a path from this item. Once our path has been created, we opened up our path tab. Next, let's choose our selection. In this case, I'll choose the first one we made. I'll right click it and export this path. I'll name this GIMP.SVG. If there's changes that we want to make to our selection before we export, or perhaps get a little bit more precise control, we might want to use some of the other controls. By choosing our Rectangle Select tool, I can add and subtract additional items from our logo. By holding Shift and dragging, I can create extra selections. Let's create a path and investigate our results. I'll make a new path based on these selections and double click it in my Paths tab to review that path. Previously unselected white areas have been added to my path. The reason for this is originally we had selected just the black area. Selecting parts of these white areas have added it to the selection. Different logos and different images will have different needs. In this case, I'll be using the bottom selection that we made previously. When creating SVGs for MO2, please make note of the best practices. Keep paths simple. Having many paths may make it challenging to work with in MO2. Logos and items with solid colors will work better than those with gradients or shadows. While SVGs can contain raster images, be sure to use paths. To extrude properly, you must have vector paths. Do not overlap vertices. When your paths intersect, some of their control points may end up in exactly the same place. These points should be merged together or removed completely or moved away from each other. Now that we've created our SVG, Let's move on to Final Cut and import that SVG into MO2. Back in Final Cut Pro 10, let's import that SVG we just created. I'll select my Add Item, 3D Text and SVG, and select SVG. I can see there's my original logo as a PNG and my newly created GIMP SVG. Let's choose this to load it into our canvas. Before we can load it into our canvas, we must tell MO2 which paths to use. GIMP has created several different paths for us to choose from. It may take some fine tuning to figure out exactly which items to use. Because of the way GIMP has created this, I want to make sure that I have this part zero selected as use in whole as well. Whatever item is in white will be extruded. Let's load this into our canvas. I can see my SVG has been loaded properly. However, I'm still missing these internal items. Let's use that same SVG and fill in these gaps. I'll go back to my add item, 3D text SVG, and open that same SVG again. This time, I'll be sure to only use these bottom three and turn this item off. Depending on how your SVG has been created, you may need to use different paths. Highlighting over these different paths will show you the path that's being selected and its contents. I can see that just these sections will be extruded. Let's load this into our scene. Now I have both the inner and outer parts of my logo. Let's add a material to this inner selection. I'll click on Add Material and let's choose something from the library. I'll choose this aluminum brushed. I'll click OK to close my material library. Choosing my second SVG, opening this disclosure triangle, I can see that SVGs work just like our text layers when we extrude them in 3D. All SVG and text layers have the option of applying different materials to the face, the bevel, and the body. Instead of applying a material to just this item, Let's go down to our extrusion settings and choose a style. I have a favorite selected called plastic. Clicking on it will apply it to my model. Clicking OK will close the style library. 
a material has been placed on each of these different items. So that's a way that you can create your own 3D logos using 2D images using the free program GIMP. For more information about MO2 and Motion VFX, please visit motionvfx.com.